Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening to all of you, and I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Welcome to all of our visitors, all those coming home, all those gathered with family. I'd like to extend a, a very warm welcome to all of you on behalf of the parish community of St. Francis de Sales. And with joy uh, at the birth of our Savior, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were stand together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my Through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. Christo ten pieda, Christo ten pieda, Christo ten pieda de nosotros. Christo ten pieda, Christo ten pieda, Christo ten pieda de nosotros.
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías El pueblo que caminaba en tinieblas vio una gran luz Sobre los que vivían en tierra de sombras una luz resplandeció Engrandeciste a tu pueblo e hiciste grande su alegría Se goza en tu presencia como goza al cosechar como se alegran al repartir el botín. Porque tú quebrantaste su pesado yugo, la barra se oprimía sobre sus, sus hombros y el centro de su tirano, como en el día de Medián. Porque un niño nos ha nacido, un hijo se nos ha dado. Lleva su, sobre sus hombros el signo del imperio y su nombre será Consejero admirable, Dios poderoso, Padre sepiterno, príncipe de la paz, para extender el principado con una paz sin límites sobre el trono de David y sobre su reino, para establecerlo y consolidarlo con la justicia y el derecho, desde ahora 
y para siempre. El celo del Señor lo realizará. Palabra de Dios. Cantan al Señor un cántico nuevo, cantan al Señor toda la tierra, cantan al Señor, bendigan su nombre. Oh, sing us new song to the Lord, sing to the Lord all the earth, oh, sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaman de atrás de su victoria, cuentan a los pueblos su gloria, sus maravillas a todas las naciones. Proclaim his salvation day by day, tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. el cielo goce la tierra retumbe al mar y cuanto lo llena vitorrean los campos y cuanto hay en ellos aclaman los árboles del bosque let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad let the sea and all within it thunder praise let the land and all it bears rejoice Then will all the trees of the wood shout for joy. del Señor que ya llega, ya llega a regir la tierra, regirá el orbe con justicia y los pueblos con fidelidad. At the presence of the Lord, for He comes, He comes to judge the earth. 
He will judge the world with justice. He will govern the peoples with his truth. Today is born a Savior Christ the Lord. Bài đọc 2, trích thư Thánh Phaolô Tông Đồ gửi tín Thi-tô Ân sủng của Thiên Chúa đấng cứu độ chúng ta đã xuất hiện cho mọi người Dạy chúng ta từ bỏ gian tà và những dục vọng trần tục Để sống tiết độ, công minh và đạo đức ở đời này Khi trông đợi niềm hy vọng, hạnh phúc và cuộc xuất hiện Sự vinh quang của Đức Giêsu Kitô là Thiên Chúa cao cả và là đấng cứu độ chúng ta Người đã hiến thân cho chúng ta Để cứu chuộc chúng ta Khỏi mọi điều gian ác Luyện sạch chúng ta Thành một dân tộc xứng đáng của người Một dân tộc nhiệt tâm Làm việc thiện Đó là lời Chúa A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went out to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, that is called Bethlehem, because he was, of, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger 
because there was no room, room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. How many of you are familiar with the old saying, never look a gift horse in the mouth? Does this mean anything to you? Okay, so some of you. So it's an old saying that I would guess goes back to a time when a lot more people lived on farms than, than they do now. And basically the saying has to do with accepting a gift graciously. Apparently, back then, a common way to uh, determine the health of a horse was to open its mouth and look at its teeth. If it had good teeth, apparently it meant it was a healthy horse. I don't know if this is true or not. I've never, I've never done it. So if you were given a horse as a gift, it would be bad manners to check its teeth to see if it were healthy. You, sh you, would, you would just accept the gift graciously and say thank you. And the big focus this time of year has become giving and receiving gifts. That's what we're all, we've all been focused on for weeks, isn't it? Like buying gifts, uh, receiving gifts, et cetera, et cetera. And I know that as a child, I was focused with laser-like intensity on the gifts that I was hoping to get for weeks at a time. But the tradition of gift giving at Christmas actually comes from the Feast of Epiphany, when we celebrate the visit of the three wise men bearing the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, to the Christ child. But having said that, we do celebrate on Christmas the greatest gift given to mankind, the gift that God gives us of his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus, God gives us everything. In Jesus, God offers us the promise of eternal life, a share in the divine life of the Holy Trinity for all eternity. In Jesus, we receive the fullness of God's revelation, which he had revealed little by little throughout the thousands of years of the Old Testament. And so at Christmas, we do indeed remember and celebrate the greatest gift, the gift of Jesus Christ himself. And there are so many facets of this gift that we could reflect on, because really it's an infinite gift with infinite dimensions. But I would like to focus on just two aspects of this gift, the gift of light and the gift of mercy. So throughout our Christmas readings, we hear about light. There's, there are four different masses at Christmas. There was the uh, Vigil Mass, which we had at five, the Mass during the night, which is this one, obviously, uh, the Mass at dawn, and Mass during the day. And there are four different sets of readings. But throughout these readings, we hear about we hear a language of, uh, about light. So, for example, in the Vigil Mass uh, this evening, the prophet Isaiah says that the victory that the Messiah will bring will shine like a burning torch. And at this Mass, we, we heard in the first reading from Isaiah again, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. 
And the Gospel reading at this Mass talks about how the birth of Jesus was announced to the shepherds who were watching over their flocks by night when suddenly the glory of the Lord shone around them. And of course, we also have the story of the three, three wise men who were guided by the light of a star to find the Christ child. So the gift of Jesus is the gift of light to us who dwell in darkness. And I think it's no coincidence that Christmas is found at this time of the year, at the, the darkest time of the year when the nights are the longest, but at the point when the, light, the nights slowly start to get shorter and shorter and the days slowly start to get longer. So what does light do but dispel darkness? In the darkness, it can be difficult to see the way. It's easy to get lost. There can be obstacles that we don't see, that we stumble over. And it can be dangerous. Things can conceal themselves in the dark that we could easily see in the light. I remember uh, having an experience of this, you know, total darkness uh, one time doing a nighttime hike in the mountains. And we had flashlights, but it only illuminated the, the, the feet, really, of the person in front of us. And so that's what we had to keep our eyes on. We had to keep following the, the feet in front of us. And it was a little unnerving. If you didn't keep your eye on the person in front of you, you could very easily get lost. You could get off track, take a step in the wrong direction, possibly right down the mountainside. So the darkness that we live in is the darkness of sin. Sin distorts and obscures our vision. It can be difficult to be aware of the presence of God in the midst of the suffering caused by sin. And no doubt the, the, no doubt the long-suffering people of Syria and Iraq often ask themselves that question, you know, where is God in the middle of, in the midst of all this suffering, in the midst of all this darkness? And the more power that sin has over us, the greater the darkness in our souls and in our minds. And the more we grow accustomed to sin, to the sin in us, the less we become aware of its power over us. But Jesus is the light that dispels the darkness of sin. And if we let him, he will illuminate our lives. He will help us to see God's will for our lives. He will help us to become the people that we were created to be. It doesn't mean that there will no longer be obstacles in our, in our way or dangers in our life, but we will be better able to see them for what they are and avoid them or climb over them, get beyond them. And the obstacles and the dangers that I speak of are essentially anything that might lead us away from God, anything that might lead us into sin. With the light of Christ illuminating our hearts and our minds, we will perceive these spiritual obstacles and dangers more clearly. So this leads us to the second gift that I want to focus on, the gift of mercy. In the parish, we've been focusing on mercy throughout the Advent season. And of course, in the Universal Church, we've been celebrating the year of mercy, which the Pope proclaimed and which began on December 8th. Jesus shares his mercy with us by forgiving our sins and then by giving us the grace to lead a life in which sin plays less and less of a role and the grace of God plays more and more of a role. Whatever our sins might be, however shameful they might be, Jesus desires to forgive us. He desires to give us the gift of his mercy to wipe the slate clean to give us the opportunity to begin again without the burdens of sin that we carry around. Our part is to receive and to accept this gift of mercy. How do we receive this gift? How do we receive this gift? Do we look the gift horse in the mouth? Do we say, do I really want this gift? Is it worth it? Is it any good? Do we put conditions on it? Do we set parameters on the, this gift of God's mercy? You know, I'll take it if it means I don't have to change anything about myself or my life. Or do we receive it as we would receive a tacky sweater, smiling through gritted teeth, and then shove the sweater in the, into the back of the drawer, never to see the light of day again? So how do we receive God's mercy? 
We receive it first by recognizing that we need this gift, that we do need to be forgiven. And then we treasure this gift. We don't treat it like the tacky sweater and shove it into the back of the, the, back of the drawer. And we do this by striving to remain close to God. After all, the gift of his mercy is a gift that he desires to give us again and again. And so we need to remain in relationship with him in order to receive it. And we remain close to him, especially by praying every day and by receiving the sacraments that he gives us, by going to Mass, and yes, even by going to confession once in a while. God gives us the sacraments for our benefit, so let's take advantage of them. And a final note about receiving this gift of mercy. There's a connection between the mercy that God gives us and the mercy that we show to others. And we mention this every time we pray the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The measure with which we are willing to forgive others has a connection to our openness to receive God's mercy. So today, let us rejoice and be glad, for we have been given the greatest of gifts, the gift of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who has come to bring light where there is darkness, and where there is sin, the gift of his mercy. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, on this holy night, let us join with believers who are praying in every part of our world, who gather in great cathedrals and simple chapels, in places at peace and in places at war. Let us pray together. That on this day, Christians everywhere may be heralds of the good news and Christ, bearers to the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this day, enemies are reconciled, hurt feelings are forgiven, wounds are healed, and families know love, joy, and gratitude for each other, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Por la familia de naciones, por los pueblos de todas las razas y los credos, por aquellas personas que son señal viva del amor y la bondad de Dios, oremos al Señor. Por los niños y niñas, especialmente los que sufren negligencia, para que reciban el cuidado y amor que debemos darle a todos nuestros hermanos en Cristo, Oremos al Señor. Te rogamos, oremos. Chúng ta cùng cầu nguyện cho những người nghèo khổ, 
và những hoạt động làm giảm đi sự nghèo đói của các nhà lãnh đạo trên thế giới và cho tất cả những ai biết chia sẻ với những người khác trong ngày lễ mừng Chúa Giáng sinh này. Chúng ta cùng cầu xin Chúa. And let us pause and pray for what we most need on this day. That we may welcome the person placed on our path and be gracious to the stranger and generous to those who love us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, your word becomes flesh in our midst. Hear our prayers, even those we cannot express, and help us to recognize your presence in our world in the faces of each person we meet this day and in our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Acepta, Señor, las ofrendas, de, las ofrendas que te presentamos esta noche de Navidad, a fin de que, al, recibirlo, al recibirlas nosotros, convertidas en el cuerpo y la sangre de tu Hijo, nos transformes en Él, en quien nuestra naturaleza está unida a la tuya. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Por eso, Padre, nosotros, tus siervos y todo tu pueblo santo, al celebrar este memorial de la muerte gloriosa de Jesucristo, tu Hijo, nuestro Señor, de su santa resurrección del lugar de los muertos y de su admirable ascensión a los cielos, te ofrecemos, Dios de gloria y majestad, de los mismos bienes que nos has dado, el sacrificio puro, inmaculado y santo, pan de vida eterna y cáliz de eterna salvación. Mira con ojos de bondad esta ofrenda y acéptala como aceptaste los dones del justo Abel, el sacrificio de Abraham y nuestro Padre en la fe, y la oblación pura de tu sumo sacerdote Melquisedec. Te pedimos humildemente, Dios Todopoderoso, que esta ofrenda se, sea llevada a tu presencia hasta el atar del cielo, por manos de tu ángel para que cuantos recibimos el cuerpo y la sangre de tu Hijo, a participar aquí desde el altar, seamos colmados de gracia y bendición. Acuérdate también, Señor, de tus hijo, hijos que nos han precedido con el signo de la fe y duerman ya el sueño de la paz. A ellos, Señor, y a cuantos descansan en Cristo, concédeles el lugar de consuelo, de la luz y de la paz. Y a nosotros, pecadores, siervos tuyos, que confiamos en tu infinita misericordia, admítenos en la asamblea de los santos apóstoles y mártires, Juan Bautista, Esteban, Matías y Bernabé, Ignacio, Alejandro, Marcelino y Pedro, Felicidad y Perpetua, Agüene, 
Lucía, Inés, Cecilia, Anastasia, y de todos los santos, y acéptenos en su compañía, no por nuestros méritos, sino conforme a tu bondad. Por Cristo, Señor nuestro, por quien sigues creando todos los bienes, los santificas, los llenas de vida, los bendices y los repartes entre nosotros. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace Peace for Peace for you, Bill.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We have one brief announcement this evening. There is a book by Matthew Kelly available in the gathering space. Um, it's a gift for anyone um, who is here by himself or herself or, or knows someone seeking to rediscover Jesus. And this gift is a book by Matthew Kelly titled Rediscovering Jesus. We have copies in both English and Spanish. Entonces tenemos... Uh, unos libros de, de Matthew Kelly que se llama, bueno, Vuelve a, re, a Descubrir a Jesús, en inglés y en español. Sí, gracias. <laughs> and so we ask that if you take a book, uh, you commit to pray that whoever receives this gift will have their heart opened by it to know our Savior in a new way this Christmas. So please stop by the, the gift wrap table as you leave, if you would like to pick up this gift. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you shares with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be Thanks to God. Be to God.